Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Zero. Welcome back to another Pro 1v1 match. Today is actually myself playing a, a set of fixed nine games against Raging K, or aka Shea. Uh, I wasn't recording for this one. Uh, I saw some comments on a recent video where I just recorded my gameplay and didn't provide any commentary. So you know what? I thought we'd watch this one back and provide some commentary. And it's a real shame I didn't record actually because <laughs> Shea is one of the most angry... Uh, people in the ho whole of Zira and probably one of the most toxic and uh, as his footnote says on um, on gamereplays.org he has a screenshot of basically where a guy called Cyrus D says Shay is the most hated person in the community. I don't know if he's the most hated community person in the community or not. Maybe he is. I don't know. Um, but he's definitely the angriest. He never says GG when he loses or pretty much maybe 10% of the time something like that. And, uh, yeah, if you do the slightest little thing to annoy him, even if you just write a question mark in a chat when he's lost a game or something, <laughs> he will go absolutely crazy. So I might provide little snippets and screenshots of where he called me all kinds of things <laughs> during this set. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be one of them. I'll also talk you through my thinking and strategy and stuff like that as well. So yeah, this is a $300 round robin tournament. It's a new Chimera here against Shea in game number one. I've lost a few sets of this, to be honest. You remember I played Tensor on the live stream. I lost that one. I lost just against Mary as well. And that's what made me think I need to start playing more 1v1s. Because I looked at how many people, how many games that the top players are playing uh, 1v1s. And I think in the month of March, I played 75 games. And people like uh, Lift Truck, I played like 700 and Tumstep had played like nearly 500. So just shows you or shows me how inactive I am. This is a uh, Nuke Mirror here. As I said, I went for a very greedy build order. I went for three supplies plus oils and then a few bunkers dotted around. And I'm paying a price a little bit here because he's done some uh, aggression straight down the middle with a Battlemaster. But then I've got an into a Warfare actually. So if you can just kind of hold and grab my oils, I'm in an okay position. And in a nuke mirror, what you can do on these supplies, if you're getting a little bit overrun like this, is just do some mines. Chances are he might go near him and, and detonate. And he has lost a unit there. And he's lost one there as well. So that's an okay start there for me, I think. Because very soon, I'm going to be on uh, oils. If he didn't have a dozer there as well, could get that one as well. So Shea behind this has gone for a helix. He's done, uh, he's gone for a similar strategy. He's got like one war factory and an airfield, but the difference is I'm getting my oil and I've done bunkers on, on the flanks as well. So I know the bot the left and right is covered. Um, and here he's going to run a battle master. But the thing is my front here is wide open. He's recognized that and just sent a flame straight at the supply. So yeah, a little bit interesting here at the start. I'm ahead in XP. Now building my prop. Nuke Mirror is always very interesting because you can do a mixture of things. Helixes, ground army, overlords, ECMs. Uh, Gatling cannon from Shea over on the left side. And Helix now straight down the middle from Shea. Yeah, he calls himself Raging K sometimes. It's quite a fitting name to be honest. <laughs> it's quite a fitting name. And Shane now applying pressure in my base. But he makes a big mistake here. And this makes me think... Uh, actually, I probably was behind until... Or well, maybe it was kind of even until this point. Because he was locked onto a power plant. But then my Elixirs come in and uh, attack the Elixirs. You, you can't m manually click to attack a Helix. So if he's attacking on a, on a power plant until he's out of range, he's always going to be attacking that power. So, yeah, that's two big losses there straight away for Shea. Whereas, meanwhile, um, thinking about dropping down the second wall factory when I have the cash for it. I'm fast to get in the oils. Yeah, Shea's got a Gatling Cannon here, so I can't push it. But I did think about pushing that then. But if he focuses on my strong licks, which is the bunker licks, then I can quickly go bad. I think I lost the supply there. Don't think I cancelled that in time. Yeah, that's kind of messy, to be honest, that is. Shea's now collecting technically off my side of the map. Now, 
Now, yeah, the, the thing with Shea is you'll never say GG when he loses. I mean, you don't have to say GG. There's nothing in the rules to say that. You'll never say good luck, have fun before the games or anything like that. And if he loses, sometimes he'll turn toxic. This is just like the history of um, of Shea. So things you can do to people <laughs> like that, if you want to capitalize on that. It's just, if he does something bad, just write a random question mark in the chat. But some people say you shouldn't. Some people on the forums lately are saying you shouldn't be allowed to bait. You shouldn't be allowed to put a question mark. Or you shouldn't be allowed to do, do light-hearted things like that. Like, Shay she is the person that comes to all these type of games. And calls people trash, calls them morons, calls them ugly trash. All this kind of stuff. Whereas, you never, you never really catch me saying, uh, calling someone ugly trash. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold me to that, just in case I randomly have a personality transplant and <laughs> call someone ugly trash. But yeah, Shay is uh, losing at the front here. Sometimes a bit hesitant whether to push with just such a small army. Because really, the only firepower there is, he, is uh, a Gat and an Overlord. Gotta be careful your ECMs if they both lock onto a truck or something randomly, then your army can start taking damage from the from the tank hunters. But yeah, slowly clearing out the middle here. Um annoying thing is he's just captured, I think, my CC with the Lotus. And now my airfields. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. I'm winning the ground army here. But he's rebuilding here as well. Wonder if I just grabbed that and just sent that in. Would that be winnable? But here I decide actually it's a little bit risky. He's got a better line of defense where I'm coming in kind of single file. Never really want to attack in single file. Yeah, Lotus has captured like half of my base, which is very, very annoying. But I was heavily focused on this rather than building an outpost or, or my own Lotus, which could detect that, I suppose. Could I afford a Lotus here? Yeah, probably. So he's got two lakes still flying around. But remember, he's had to rebuild them because he lost two at the start. I'm nearly level three, so carpet, artillery, and stuff will help. But in my mind here, I'm a little bit scared about the armies building up because uh, you got to make you don't you don't know fully what he's doing. If he's got mass lixes, you got to have enough gats, ECMs. But also, if he's gone like heavy overlords, so yeah, you always got to be in your mind what's he going for. But he's getting my oil here. I decided to go over here to kill that Gatling cannon because that's given me now level three, and now I got a mind drop coming in. So he's cancelled that supply again. I'm going to recapture my oil because I've got the red guard inside of the bunker. Mind drop only kills, I think, one ECM. But yeah, Shea is a bit of a beast of a player. On his day, he's very, very good when he's uh, when he's performing well. And I've seen him play Nuke Mirror before. And why I opened up with such a greedy build order in the beginning is because normally I know he goes greedy. I can think back to when he's played Size in the World Series and stuff. I can remember a Nuke Mirror game. I think it was the decider they played against each other. It's weird how you remember all these little details and little games. He went like loads of oils and loads of supplies in the beginning. And then basically won, with, I think, won with that kind of economy. Uh, or at least some tournament that was anyway. <clears throat> so I thought I would also open up Greedy, go for three supplies, bunker off the sides and grab my oils. And that's basically my line of thought here. Yeah, but you always got to be careful because one bad fight and this game can be decided. So always in your mind, do I fight? Oh, where did that artillery land? Oh, he tried to bait my army there. Always got to be in your mind, even though if you're ahead or whatever. The XP would say I'm ahead at this point. It's always got to be in your mind. Um, yeah, w one bad fight with this army and this army and it all goes uh, pear-shaped. He's got minimal gats in here. So I think actually he's probably got... Probably got a better composition, to be honest. I've only got two overlords. Whereas he's heavily gone overlords. Options for me are I could go more lixers and try and take out his gats. Or I could just counter him with uh, equal numbers of overlords. But he picks off my strong overlord here. He is stepped on the mines. 
I'm going to go in here with Elixirs and find the barracks. Yeah, he's picked off a strong overlord there. Don't know why I've got two beacons there from Shay. One of his dozers. He's already got a CC though, so it doesn't make a difference, but I am taking out his trucks. Shay is also now level three. Don't know if I've used my carpet yet or not. I think I was waiting for his army to get in a decent position to use the carpet. Or have I already used it? I don't I don't think I used it. But now my Lixis are gonna get stuck. Did think about that <laughs> going up to the top left. That's good for him. He's trapped them Lixis. Mind drop comes through. Uh, but yeah, realizing his army's out of position, now maybe I can go for the base and go for the kill. His carpet is coming in, though. I have Lotus there ready to capture his supply. He shouldn't be able to come in with Elixirs, because I think I've got chain gun upgrade. But he makes a huge mistake here, flying his Elixirs in. He's probably pressed the wrong control group there, to be fair. But that's two free gifted Helix is still ahead in XP, although he's closing the gap. Artillery coming in from him. I know that's going to be on my army somewhere. Uh, there's, yeah, an ECM. Now is the moment of truth. I'm in a bad position here. So is he, though, kind of. He's coming in a single file. Tried to rotate and tried to take this fight. And now clicking the ECMs and the overlords frantically. Trying to disable as many units as possible. And take out as many overlords as possible. At this point, I've reached level four. I've got carpet coming in on this position here. But it all heavily depends on how this fight goes. Like I say, one fight can decide a game. And I think that is pretty decided. Taking new cannon shots to the face. But if you move forward there, you're going to die to the Overlord. And if you stay there, you're going to die to the uh, die to this new cannon that is now floating in the air, by the way. Shea getting his supply captured. If we look on his view... He doesn't have very much now, to be fair. He has 2k, one Overlord out, but I'm coming now already with the next wave and I'm preparing a uh, Bunker Licks for that as well. A lot of this win on this map, I think, stems from uh, having the oil down in the bottom left. Whereas I've killed his and he, I also had mine sooner. The Eco Boom from the beginning, I think, made a, uh, made a big difference. So Shay's now losing his base. And this is where I realize I've won. Because he has literally no units left. Got plenty of cash. I'm expanding into the middle. I expanded here as well. EMP coming in to disable his base. And now to make <laughs> extra angry, I go to build a CC in his base. And then he quits without saying GG. So you I was actually going to build that. That's not a scaffold. That I'm actually going to build that CC in his base. Uh, and I didn't mean to make him so angry for that. But it did. It's got like anger issues or something like that. And he actually became super, super angry. So I'll put some screenshots up of what he called me. <laughs> cancer stuff. <laughs> and we'll move on to the next game. Okay, so a nice 1-0 start there. I thought that was pretty... Uh... Okay, jumping into game number two, super weapon against Tox. I will play with the super weapon first of all, up in the top. With the red, and then down in the south, we've got the blue um, Shea in the GLA Tox. So yeah, it's an imbalanced matchup. Super weapon should lose here. However, it's not impossible, I don't think. So my strategy here was to try and mass spam the defense in the beginning, try and stop any technicals coming through. So what I'm going to try to do is... Get an EMP here, get an EMP here, and try and seal off the entrances. Uh, there is one other build that crossed my mind, which is uh, you can do a war factory, no barracks, upgrade that, and then do an EMP. And then just spam a few Vs in the beginning, but you have to be reliant on that EMP actually coming into play. Maybe you would do it in the middle, or so. maybe you'd do it in the middle, single war factory. But yeah, in this instance, I just go for two EMPs. Um, in the hope that he'll run his first technical into one of the EMPs and mess up his first attack. By that time, I can get War Factory and Barracks out. Uh, Shay, meanwhile, just going for a normal build by the looks of things. 
turn on the mid, turn on the right. So this is a pretty good start, running his technical into the MP, but he does turn it around and, and it will survive. And he's also managed to kill that EMP, uh, and now now the floodgates are open. So Tech RPG will now come in and take out the dozer. Have to cancel that, but now it's very, very bad to be honest, because he can just unload, kill the power. And then don't have enough uh, units out. Trying to save that power a little bit. V gonna come out, gonna try and run over some stuff. Do run over some stuff, but that power's gonna get killed now. Trying to rebuild the power. But unfortunately, yeah, it all comes down to that first EMP. Uh, in hindsight, I think maybe, um, maybe an EMP and a war factory, or maybe an EMP and a barracks. So you could like laser lock the first few technicals and then rebuild the EMP. Something like that, but yeah, quite a quick win. I went for a bit of a high risk, higher reward strategy there. And the score is now 1 1. Okay, jumping into the next match. It's just the reverse of before. So this time I'm playing with the yellow for some reason. The GLA talks down to the south for the snowy drought. Um, and then up in the top, we have the blue for Raging K. Name is quite fitting. <laughs> AK Shea with super weapon up in the top. Yeah, so going back to like uh, being provocative or whatever, building a CC in someone's base or writing a question mark after they quit without saying GG. Some people on the forum suggested that you shouldn't be able to you shouldn't be able to provoke someone by doing such things. You shouldn't be able to place a CC in someone's base. So, but then my thing my thing is around that. Like, what are we going to start doing? Are we going to start drawing lines on, on the maps where if you if you build a CC in someone's base? Because, and they get angry about it because they've got anger issues. What are we going to start having rules like you can, where you can and can't place buildings and stuff like that? It's just ridiculous, to be honest. <laughs> Let's face it, it's just ridiculous. So Shay's gone for a doze drop, does kill a few workers, but ultimately loses his dozer to a TNT. trying to like it overrules the workers there so it just starts collecting and delays the workers from collecting but he has lost some hp on his uh on his snook he's going to go over here and try and do the same now but it has already collected some uh technical straight away from me down the middle of the map is it tnt my first one i believe yep it is an imbalanced matchup you're supposed to win with with the tox here so the pressure is on to make sure you actually do get the win. Otherwise, we'll be fighting an uphill battle, and then it would be two one for Shea if I lose this one. So I try to save as many technicals as possible. End up losing that one, but I've saved the vet too. Tried to put the worker inside of there, but there's a weird bug in the game where you can't put it in if it needs to get repaired. The repair feature will override. Next wave from me. Shay's only collecting on one supply. And he's collecting on four Chinooks, but one of them is collecting from my supply. Big unloaded tech RPG from me. And then what this does is try try to force him into a bad engagement. Because he doesn't want his tunnel to get up. So he, he if that tunnel wasn't building, he probably wouldn't fight it. It might just go elsewhere. The fact that that tunnel's building, you're trying to force someone in or, or to take a bad engagement that they otherwise would not take. So he's still collecting on my second supply, which is slowing my economy down, but I've expanded to a third pretty quick. Gonna go for oil behind that as well.
Big tech RPG push from me. But he's going to unload. He can't come in with the Vs really because he's going to lose him. So if he comes too close to the Vs, he will will lose him. Probably a decent play by that, him there because he's saved most of these apart from until this attack here. But he crushed all my stuff with that ambulance. which was pretty nice. I probably should have finished that one with the RPGs at least. Because the RPGs all died in the end anyway. But if you look at the map... He's only really collecting, like, on, what, one Chinook on this main here? He's actually picked up his dozer. I did not realize that. Got my missile launcher right here. This has got RPGs in it, if I'm not mistaken. No, actually, I picked up some scrap there. Uh, he, he thought they were just regular technicals, but I picked up some scrap there, turned around you and took victorious. the fight. And, yeah, Tox wins. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of kind of is imbalanced. If it gets the later game and you get EMPs up and Aurora's... Can go uh, later, but yeah, 2-1 for me. Okay, jumping into the next map. That Snowy Drought was his pick, and this one on Forest of Camelot is my pick. I keep picking it because I kind of like it. I think it's a beautiful map, like the design and stuff, but probably against the top players, I do lose on it. Uh, at least like 50% of the time, maybe 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 a bit less. Maybe it's like 40%. I don't know. I do, I do lose some on this map for sure, but I'm experienced on it. I keep playing it. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I've got the China Vanilla here. And up at the top right, we have Blue for Shea, aka Raging K, with the uh, China Tank. So yeah, I think the tank is more overpowered here because you've got stronger vehicles and cheaper vehicles. Like your dragon tanks cost 700 and they start vetted uh, compared to 800 and not vetted for China Vanilla. Your Gatlins cost 700 and they start vetted. And the same for China is 800 and no vet. So straight away, them units are stronger for the tank. You got more expensive outposts though at 950 a piece, where I think they're only 800 for China Vanilla. So that does even out some of the things. Then you got stronger battle masters for the tank. I'm trying to block his flamer a little bit here, but also I do need to get mining, so I'm kind of blocking myself. Um, Shay coming in with a flamer at the top. Yeah, the idea here for me: spam loads of outposts. Try to get to the mid game and just, just go from there, basically. If, if you let a flamer in early game, you probably lost. Does that kill his cat? No. Nope. So dealing with that, he's got an outpost down in the bottom right. Outpost versus outpost battles are always awkward because they're just both outposts die. A uh, bit of a bad engagement for me here. I lose an outpost and he's coming in with an outpost and flamer. Uh, but I am also coming down the middle. He's got uh, several gats out. Again, outpost versus outpost battles are always a little bit awkward. But especially if he's got a flamer in the mix then. Because my, my tank ends is susceptible to a flame wall. Or just a regular attack. Okay, so he's getting an outpost in. And I'm getting a Battlemaster in. Uh, Shay's expanded up in the top left. But luckily for me, i got two Flamers on the way. If he gets a Battlemaster out there, he can stop that. Easily. If he loses a Supply Truck here, just send it away. It's going to die regardless. Nothing you can do to save it. And I'm coming in with my Flamers. Luckily, he's got lots of Gats out. I think he should have a different... Different unit. Like, imagine if they were, like, a uh, Battlemaster Flamer. Would be easier, I think. But I've also got this Battlemaster running around, so maybe... Yeah, I think his, his composition here is bad. But this is excellent for me, because he's just expanded quick here. If I leave him on that, then I'm going to lose the game. So the fact that two Flamers for me rock up and I manage to kill that... I think it's probably, in hindsight, he's got too many Gatlins out. I mean, Shea wants to watch this and get some free tips to improve his play. He's more than welcome. <laughs> I'm sure he's watching this whole video, so hi, Shay.
Yeah, bit of luck for me there. The fact that his war factory is then taken down by the same flamers, I think, that have killed that area. I think that's pretty good. And now three outposts coming in from the right. Two outposts down in the middle. And yeah, me now realizing that he doesn't have that many gats out anymore. Now he's got heavy uh, ground, but no anti-air. So realizing actually a helix might be the right thing to do. I actually couldn't place my airfield around here for some reason. I thought he had a uh, outpost stealth. They hear I'm going for the dozer hunt because I think I killed the other dozer over here. Get it. Praying that this doesn't get to 100%. Now he's only on one war factory. Start chipping away at that straight away with the tank enters. Any damage he takes on that now can't be repaired. Even if those tank enters are going to die in the end. Better to do damage to that and get it as low as possible. But also now, all I need is a helix because he's got no anti-air here. This is all free XP and Shake quits once again. Don't think, don't know if he says you GG for, <laughs> throughout this set at all. Never, never any good luck, have fun. He's only got negative comments to say, which is why you will build a CC in his base every now and again. Or write the equation or question mark because his anger <laughs> goes through the roof. <laughs> okay, jumping into the next match. Up at the top right, we've got myself with the China tank with the red. And down at the bottom left, we've got the blue China vanilla for uh, Shea or Raging K. I think Raging K is probably the better. Maybe Raging Shea would be a better name, actually. Like a, a better fit. Yeah, this map is very beautiful. All the colors and stuff, the color of this wa water and stuff is very nice. Only thing that is a little bit weird is these supply crates, I suppose, but every map is unique. And, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd rather those supplies be there than not. Uh, line of thinking here is the China tank is better if we just do similar to before, just spam units down the middle and sides and stuff eventually. Should be able to break through and get a flame through. Ideally, don't want this going super late until he gets um, new cannons and maybe MIGs out or something like that. Otherwise, then it will be uh, will be bad. He has messed up this supply, though. That supply is then way too close. And that one's probably too far. <laughs> These trucks are just moving anyway. But yeah, I think I uh, didn't realize this during the set, but I think that probably hinders him a little bit. Outpost versus outpost fight again. Luckily, mine's surviving there, actually. He's the evac one, though. Where has he put that? I'm not sure. I've got a guy coming in to clear that up. Outpost flamer in these kind of matchups. Any China versus China. Outpost flamer is generally a good combo. Counters a lot of things. I am standing in the fire there a little bit. Got to watch out for that flamer, because if he sneaks that in the base, then could be GG. Yeah, generally, if you, get, if you get a flamer in the base any time in the first five minutes, and he starts killing buildings, generally, it's probably over for you. Okay, luckily, that one's going to get stopped. But this one, got to keep an eye on that. Got a Battlemaster and a Gat there. He might take out my flamer there in the middle. Got a Gat coming in from here. Got a flamer coming in from here. Yeah, you got to multitask on all three lanes. Kind of like... Um, uh, a MOBA game. <laughs> well, you've got the different lanes, but you're controlling all of them. League of Legends or something. <laughs> you're taking out his trucks here. Yeah. I'm like, I'm just going to lose that gap there.
thing is, yeah, you gotta you gotta be controlling units. What well, I mean, it's, there's like three different, four different battles going on. There was here, just took out something here. There was this battle, and I had something here. So yeah, thinking about it, you got four different areas to be controlling. So game is progressing. He's on a prop now, which is not good news for me. Uh, but so am I. I'm going to build your barracks as close to the oil as possible. So as soon as your Lotus is out, she hasn't got far to walk. She can literally just get the oil straight away. So I'm more advanced than getting the oil. He's got our barracks ready. He's building a bunker here. Well, that's a bit of a bad fight for me. I don't think I want to hang around there. Because he's going to kill things here and he's got... You got two Battlemaster kills and the straightaway is on like 700 XP. You get like 200 XP per tank. It's got the double veterancy, so. Yeah, you gotta be aware of losing those tanks. So here, I didn't know if this was necessarily a good idea because I know I've got a Lotus out and she's going around capturing everything, but I decided just to preemptively kill that. Let's focus on his Lotus and see if that actually paid off. Expanded to the top left, but it's deep in my mind, actually, that when he expanded, I rocked up there and cleared it straight away. Nice little double bunker there from uh, Shay. Hmm. Is that a sign of panicking? Mistakes. He's got his Lotus still idle. This Flamer has been stopped. Battlemaster going to get away. But realizing I might be able to take this fight, depending on how full that bunker is, with an ECM here and the Battlemasters and the Gads, it's quite a good, quite a good composition to crack a bunker, I think. But he's taking out all my anti-infantry now. He's got five tank hunters in it actually, and he's nearly level three. Yeah, got to be careful not to lose any more Battlemasters, really. Very bad micro from me here. I think I was focusing on the left. <laughs> That's what I'll blame it on. Okay, Shay goes to the middle, captures the middle oil. I'm on two oils. But I'm on an extra supply than Shay. Shay's trying to expand now and get this one. Yeah, I'm going for MiGs now because I realize if I'm against uh, this kind of an army, Napalm MiGs might be able to come in and wipe it out. But also, if you just go nuke cannons, you can stop it. If he goes Lixes, you can stop it with Napalm MiGs as well. So I just to kill the middle oils. So Shea is now on no oils. But I could be capturing that one now if I didn't flame it down, actually. Yeah, I've got more map control up here. Shay's a little bit pushed back, shall we say. Thing is about this map, your second supply dries up pretty quick, so that supply's dried up. But I get one of his dozers there. Weaken that flamer. He's already on a CC. If that flamer gets in, it could be very bad news, actually. But it's getting stopped only just but thanks to the help of that MiG weakening. But now I'm moving in with my army on this bunker. Similar situation to before in the middle. But this new cannon, I don't actually see that in the game. Do now. And now he's already level 3 just from killing a load of Battlemasters. So. But I have cleared him off that position. So is that worth it to give him level 3 to kick him off a supply? Maybe. Because he's only on one supply now. And that's a bad supply because he's, uh, he's got two trucks collecting badly. Um, I know he's probably going to try and capture my mix, so I've already got an outpost prepared. Uh, artillery coming in from him. I cancelled my airfield because I thought the carpet might catch it. Yeah, oil is dead. But I've still got an oil 
And he's got an oil, so still kind of even in that sense. Take out his new cannon with the nuke mix. Sorry, with the napalm mix like they're meant to. Could lose a mig there. Yep. So yeah, he's getting pushed back quite a lot now. I've got 7k in the bank-ish. Okay, artillery from me. Got it placed on that war factory. Now, little did I know, actually, in the in the tournament, that that actually killed an overlord as well, but it did. Make sure me take out another new cannon. I'm on like 10k now. I've got control of the middle. I've got control of the bottom right. He's just basically on one supply in his base, and he's only got three units left. So he's in a bad position. I have many to spare. And yeah, GG. Well, no GG from Shay. You are because there never is. <laughs> okay, so four one. Okay, next map is Vendetta. Can't remember if I chose this or he yeah, he would have chosen this because I chose Forest of Camelot. Down in the south, we've got Shea or Raging K, Raging Shea, with the USA in the blue. And then for me, I've got China Tank in the red. Now, normally, this is a 1 1 matchup because the USA will just know Eco, which she's going for, and you're making outposts, Gats, mainly Gats, maybe like one or two outposts. Um, he's trying to be clever here. Placing a uh, placing a barracks to try and trick me if I'm waypoint scouting. I am waypoint scouting, but I'm not waypoint scouting back here. I'm just waypoint at, waypoint scouting at the front. Realize there's a barracks here, so I pre press a, a beacon because it could be a fake no eco. He could do a fake there, and then you could be waypoint scouting later on, and then all of a sudden it's clear. And then you know it. He's faked a no eco, and he's actually going for a normal build. But it's the fact that I detected a barracks and it's still there at this point in the time. Then I'm preparing for a no eco. So here I'm sneaking a gap around the back to go and hit the Chinooks. Meanwhile, I'll try my best to try and hold this no eco by going for an outpost and a gap, which is typically the first two units you'll make to try and counter a no eco. But it's a dead giveaway when, the do when you see the dozers as well. He took out his dozer. And he's already got a weakened uh, first V. And he's actually just going for one V and then into Crusaders, which is a little bit weird. Normally you would do two full Vs and then maybe a few Crusaders. But he's going to lose both dozers here. Try to get in that building. That'd be amazing if I get in that building. But luckily for him, he uh, stops me from going that bit. I think that would may maybe be GG. Because them Crusaders would take a hell of a lot of damage or die. Or I could focus on V and kill one of the full Vs. That one, maybe. But yeah, at this point, it's very hard. Because you've got the Crusaders to deal with, which the Gats absolutely uh, are really bad against, uh, against Crusaders. But also then, if he's got super micro on, on the Vs, it's very hard to get anything done. So start to drop down a barracks, see if we can make tank hunters to counter any of this. Make a tank hunter blob might be good. Meanwhile, I'm, I am camping his production. Camping his uh, resource collection, rather. So his crusade is very weak there, but this whole area is now screwed because uh, the trucks are dying. Doze is dead. 
But, yeah, I wasn't properly looking at his base, but I thought maybe those two Chinooks were dead. So I thought, you, at this point, you might be able to just do loads of bunkers. Try and hold against the no-eco. Literally, if I just... I, I'm still collecting, whereas I thought his Chinooks could be dead, because I just parked that, that, that there for ages and didn't look at it, because I was focused on micro and back at home. But yeah, little did I know he still has Chinooks out. But I thought I will waypoint one back around the side. Uh, to see if I can get him. But he's actually sold his war factory. Didn't realize that. Tempting to try and finish that, but then he will also lose the Gats. Very, very difficult against no eco. Very difficult. But I do have a nice blob of tank enters now, and he's probably scared to engage into that. I'm just dropping down as many bunkers as I can. Meanwhile, hoping this Gat can come in and uh, kill his Chinooks. But yeah, I didn't know he'd actually sold his war factory. And that he's very lucky to be alive. Funkiest base, best base you've ever seen, I think. Mm, bit of a traffic jam here for me. And losing a lot of tank enters as well. Do take out one V4 it there. But he's going to kill all my gats here with a nice laser. Look, I'm being blocked by myself. Yeah, that V's a bit weak. Oh, it's not dead there. Yeah, at that point, you think it's GG, to be honest, because he's got no units out. But I have now killed the Chinooks, actually, with this gap. So I think he's spreading a missile defender there and a missile defender there in case of a sneaky flame around the back. That's probably one of the only things that can kill him. But now knowing that he's, uh, he's actually on no Chinooks and no War Factory, the pressure's on him now to make something happen because I'm the one collecting. I can just keep, keep spamming tank enters all day, day long. He's run his Vs there into a bunker, and now there's only one V left. Still very close, though, to be fair, and he's running his ambulance into the tank enters, but ambulance also goes down. And at this point, yeah, maybe realizing that it might actually be GG for him. It's a very weird situation. Only need to kill that one V now, and it's GG. And I've still got a dozer as well. Got a few red guards in here just to kill the missile to finish faster, and he's run his V into a bunker. His power's getting killed. He's on no war factory because he sold it, and he's on no Chinooks, and that is GG. And that's one of the rare instances you will you see a hold against the no eco. And I think it's probably more due to mistakes from him. I think he should make two Vs, two full Vs, and an ambulance, and then into Crusaders later. Um, but yeah, GG. Okay, going into the reverse then. Obviously feeling pretty confident here because you only need to do a no eco, two full Vs and just control it decently and you should just win here. USA should win with just a, a pure no eco. Uh, let's have a look from his view if he's actually waypoint scouting or not. Yeah, he's going to waypoint scout. So he's placed down a barracks, which he's now... Yeah, he's trying to waypoint scout. Okay. Build orders complete, sir. Hmm. I think he knows there's no eco. But to be honest, I wasn't trying to hide it. I'm not trying to place down a supply or anything like that. Instead, I'm unable to place waypoint, but I think it's because he was clicking here. Yeah, I don't know if he... Uh, I think he full well knew there's a, a no eco coming. But even if you know it's coming, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. You're still probably going to open with a get and an outpost. you got a choice here. You can either send that first V to try and get some damage off, like kill the trucks and stuff. Or you can wait till you've got two fully loaded Vs with the ambulance and then push together. 
perhaps a bit more maybe high skill required by sending that one v forward because you've got to try and make sure it gets in does some damage and gets out without taking damage or even dying got more chance of them staying alive with the ambulance and with two together so yeah i decide to opt for the latter which is two v's and the uh, ambulance So yeah, at this point, chewing away, chewing away through the gats, just got to make sure you control them nicely. A key target for you is to hit the power to stop the reduction of the gats. It halves the... Oh, sorry, not halves the production speed. It half, uh, doubles the production speed. Sometimes the door will even open as if a gat was coming out, but if you hit the power, it'll delay it by double, yeah, double the time. Lose my dozer there. A little bit risky here because that ambulance is a little bit low. Also, he's lost power now. He's already rebuilt his power, actually. But he uh, just quits again without saying You are G victorious. G okay, jumping into the next one. We have an interesting one. Super weapon against China, which generally is actually pretty balanced. Um, down in the bottom left, we have me with the red super weapon general. And then up in the top right, we've got Raging Shea with the blue China Vanilla. Yeah, I think you prefer to play the China Vanilla here. I see it winning more often than not. But nothing to say that a super weapon can't win. My thinking here was to go for all of the oils and then build the MPs on the oils as uh, a kind of defense, thinking that he will go for a Gatlix. So yeah, he's going for oils and the Gatlicks. Yeah, the question you've got when you're trying to vanilla, do you place the airfield first, get the Gatlicks out first and then a third supply? Or do you go for greedy for three supplies and then a Gatlicks? That's the questions you've got. See, unfortunately for me, he's gone inside of that building and tried to capture that, but his red guard's going to be on it. It's got the red guard veteran here as well, which makes him really strong against the rangers. He's gone for the kill on the ranger, but loses it to the EMP. He does have a Gatlix out. So I'm collecting on three Chinooks. Gone for the oils. Really important for me, really, to get this... Uh, this oil. I've got inside of some of his buildings here towards the front. But a lot of this hinges on the oils. I probably could have crushed that actually, but now he's gonna, what, is he gonna deny it? Yeah, he denies it. That's my mistake there. I could have crushed it with the, uh, with the dozer. So build a barracks there to try and recapture it. But that's a big difference actually. If I got two oils there, I could build this faster, which I am doing anyway, but then I don't have to worry about a barracks to recapture this. Because now I've got Lixis flying around. So he's going to capture this one. I should go inside that building, but I don't know if I do. Got a Vetsu Red Guard, so my Ranger can't win that fight. And yeah, Shane now pushing out down the map at the troop crawler, tank hunters, troop crawler up here as well. Now he's going to capture that oil. So this is a major mistake for me. I should have crushed it. Should have that oil for myself and then maybe gone into double war factory Tovies. Hmm. But yeah, now he's on three oils, um, and he's got a big load of stuff coming down the middle. But I do get flashbangs soon. 
MP being built in my base. Got any MP here, so the Lixus can't fly in. But the Lixus can just fly straight down the middle. I'm going for loaded Vs. Which, if he then transitions to MIGs, loaded Vs will get countered. And this position has been lost. Yeah, very difficult position to be in now because he's on three oils. He's got what I consider to be the better army anyway. China Vanilla against Super Weapon, I think. Try to build an every MP. But at this point, just look at the thin sliver I've got of the base here. <laughs> and he's got a flamer coming in as well. And I don't have any missile defenders there. But trying to hold that with one V. Uh, there's quite a lot of guys there, I think. Lays look that flamer. You see, we're at Red Guard now. It's got the Lixus coming in. There isn't an EMP here for air cover. But there's just so many uh, ground units now. It's making the CC so we doesn't get hunted. He's expanded to the top left. Yeah, it's kind of easy for the China here from this point, to be honest. Like, you just click on that and just attack move here. That's going to cause me enough problems. Never mind when the MiGs flying around and stuff. Could say that is over. But yeah, big part of it, I think, hinged on not getting that oil. At this point, he was typing to me to leave the game. He just writes leave like uh, Fargo does. I think like Fargo popularized some stuff and then Shay is like a Fargo wannabe. He can't be some of the stuff. And then he's placed two barracks in my base. As a... <laughs> As if to say I've won the game. And it's a real insult. Kind of like when I built a CC in, the, in his base like right at the beginning. Which is fine if he's won the game. He can place as many scaffolds as he wants. As long as he's abiding by the scaffold rules. The scaffold rules is basically if you're going to build a building, you have to make sure you actually build it. Don't just place it to like cause uh, an issue. You, you can place scaffolds to um, distract like MIG fire and stuff like that. Air unit fire, which I don't know whether that should be allowed or not. You are allowed to do that. But yeah, certain other things you're not allowed to do. So yeah, uh, score here actually is my mistake. Six. Two. Okay, jumping into reverse. At this point, I won the set anyway because it's fixed nine games. Um, but it would be nice to get as many wins as possible because it's round robin tournament and you get like a point for every win. I've now got what I consider to be the stronger army with a China Vanilla. But he obviously just saw what I did. It didn't work out. So he's probably going to adapt it and do something different to counter what I'm going to do, which is um, double red guard to capture all of the oils and then into a Gatlix. But I need to work out here if it's better to do two supplies and then into an airfield, or do you do three supplies and then into an airfield? Can't remember exactly what I do here. So Shay's going one war factory, one barracks. Hmm. Okay, so I do go straight into an airfield. So I basically, I've copied Shay's build, pretty much identical, apart from his... Airfield was a little bit more over there. Can he see? Yeah, he can see. No, wait. He can't see. No, he can't see what I've done. But he's got a, probably a pretty good idea. And I think what he's doing now is rushing out the toe upgrade from his uh, wolf factory. So, yeah. Is this build order that he's doing better than what I did? One wolf actually one barracks into oils.
Maybe it is better because he's got a good chance of now actually denying this one. My Galax is out, but it's not got the gat upgrade yet. And he's also going to try and capture that oil. He could capture this one a little bit faster. And he's going to go and try and stop this. With his dozer, but he's too slow. And I already kind of thought he might do that. So I put a tank into inside of there. So yeah, trying to figure out if he's got a decent strat here. Going for War Factory Barracks. This is a hard fight for the Gatlix. Might take out a V. Didn't realize that I had four MDs inside of it, but he just unloads and kills it. I'm now expanding. I don't know why my dude has gone out of that. But he needs to get back in. Never looks lost. So maybe his build is better, to be honest. Because it looks like he's actually in an okay position. I think mine would have been good if I had got that oil. But here, he's on two oils, expanding to a second supply, and he's got Vs in my base, killed two Lixers as well. So yeah, he, he so far has had a much better start. But I now start the tank into spam. But yeah, two Vs running around your base, killing trucks and dozers and stuff. Not something you really want. Uh, but I do have this bottom right position that he's not really focused on at the minute. He takes out one of my dozers. But I can flame down one of his oils here. And now he's wrecking my supply. He's also capturing an oil. But I've got Flamer and uh, Troop Caller entering his base. So yeah, I actually prefer... Or actually, I wouldn't say I prefer. I think they're both different strats, what me and him did with the super weapon. But I'd say I like what he's doing. That uh, missile defender is very funky. His V's still running around causing me problems. My slow infantry chasing it. He's got control here. And he's just run over a load of guys. Another licks of mine gone down. It's not going well. Wherever we look, really, it's not really going that well. Apart from that oil kill. He's still on two oils versus my one. He's killed one of my supplies. So now he's got a choice. Does he want to stand and fight that? He's building a strat, so the fight would be a lot easier. Or does he want to go in and try and uh, go for the base? But I've got blobs of uh, tank fences all around. If those Vs do run into a nice little blob. And they can go down pretty quick. But yeah, he's still got two oils. This is my one. And yeah, really, he has to fight this. He's gone for double War Factory MTV spam. Uh, he does have some flashbangs out. But either he starts losing buildings here, or he has to fight it. He's got rangers. Rangers are inside of the Vs. Mix coming through for me. Research Napalm, meanwhile. And for the first time, actually, it's some decent bit of success, actually, coming in with Mix. Taking out his uh, Vs. He's been waiting for Search and Destroy. Yeah, more stuff is going down for him. But he's got Search and Destroy and Flashbang, so eventually it looks like he will win this, but it's how many Vs can you take down in the process? And the answer is, like, what, six-ish there at least? Maybe a few more went down over here. 
But if you get a lot of mix, you should be able to still take him out. The question is, can you get the numbers of mix up? So losing one mig there for two Vs is worth it, I think. Especially if I've got economic advantage because I'm on this supply. So I realize that's his last dozer. Can't remember exactly what happened to the first dozer. Oh no, he died over there, didn't it? So that's his last dozer. So he's dead. So now I just need to get to level 3, which I am level 3. But he needs to build a CC. Got a bit of artillery on his base and that should be one. But he still has double war factory and a barracks. And has he got power as well or no power? Low power. Oh, he's low power. That's good. <laughs> Didn't know he had no power. Yeah, these are the kind of fights you love when he runs Vs into tank hunters like that. Even though his micro is pretty decent there, he still lost one V. Any V you can take down. Because I'm not in the most amazing position ever. Do have an oil there. Recapturing an oil there. Do take out more these. And yeah, I'm in a much better position than him, to be honest. Well, not both ideally in the best position because I've taken some damage and he has. I've got more refinery, so everything's cheaper. But he's in the worst position because he's got no power and no dozer. So. So yeah, I took out some of his Vs there. Artillery coming through for me. Does that hit his barracks? I think it does. Yeah, it does kill his barracks. So he can't produce any more MDs or Pathfinders, which is good, but he's still on double war factory. I'm getting the Never Royal. Very kind of bitty, this replay. Like lots of little scrappy fights going on here and there. Try and capture his entire base. <laughs> More of a distraction, really. He's going to stop it, of course, but it keeps him in his base. As long as you can keep in his base when you Mali build up the mix, the better, I think. Yeah, keeping him on his toes here with flamers coming in. Because if one flamer reaches the base, then all those buildings are dead. Those buildings are low anyway. Carpet came in, actually. But unfortunately for me, did not kill the buildings. Yeah, sad thing about flame is, is it can get laser locked easily. And yeah, not in the most amazing position for me. I've got a decent-ish number of MIGs, but if, if he presses X and I lose a load of MIGs on the on the return journey, could be bad. But luckily for me, it keeps them all kind of together there. All of them are low or dead. So that's not too bad. Yeah, definitely him being on low power. I didn't. I don't think I realised there was no power. Or maybe, maybe I did. I don't know. I'm watching this a few days after it actually happened. So. Okay, V's coming in for Shades. This is bad news for me, really, because camping my FBO production. 
Migs ideally need a a clear route to their target. Not being attacked whilst they're on the airfield. Them landing there is also a mistake. They should be coming back to land here because they're probably just going to die now. But he could run into mines. He's got nowhere to go, really. Another flamer coming in, which is keeping him on his toes again. We still got search and destroy. So maybe that carpet earlier should have been dead center on the uh, strap. Been a battle for this oil for a long time. At this point, yeah, he's running a bit empty because his main's dried up. She's still collecting on two Chinooks. But... Yeah, now I've got a Flamer entering his base. I have a CC, I have the support powers on cooldown. He's more under pressure to do things, but I've got enough airfield spread around. I think it's a really good attempt, and he's done better than me with the super weapon. Because I, I died much sooner, but unfortunately, the super weapon still loses. So unfortunately for him, or unfortunately for the game. <laughs> sure, there's a way super weapon can win this. Interested to hear if people's different builds that you would like to see super weapon doing. I think my build could have been good if I'd have actually captured that oil. You are victorious. Yeah, anyway, GG. Um. Yeah, a few people on the forum saying you shouldn't be allowed to provoke someone, you shouldn't be allowed to write a question mark or place a CC in someone's base, but also the only reason I do that is because Shane never says GG, never says good luck, have fun, always just quits out and then is a bit negative and toxic around things and calls you trash, crack, clown and moron and all this kind of stuff. So uh, it's uh, in comparison to the stuff he says, just writing an occasional question mark or placing a CC in his base is very, very... Uh, light on the scale compared to the stuff he comes out with. Anyway, GG will play. Let me know if you thought of this commentary over the replace and I'll see you in the next one, GG. If you'd like to support the channel whilst also protecting yourself online, consider getting NordVPN using my link in the description. It will hide your IP when playing Zero Out online, either through Revora or Game Ranger, and you won't lose any internet speed. So use my link in the description for a massive discount and a 30-day money-back guarantee.